Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lesson three. Today we're going to be covering a very important topic called case endings. Um, so you may have heard someone tell you that when you're reading the Quran, you have to watch every vowel mark to make sure you don't change any vowels around because it could completely change the meaning of the sentence. And that is true. And that has to do with this concept of case endings. Now this might sound a little bit technical, but we'll break it down and inshallah it'll make sense. So the thing to start off with is to note that every noun in Arabic can have three cases. Okay, so this idea of cases for nouns doesn't really exist exactly in English. So we it's it's hard to think of an exact you know uh, parallel, but maybe you can th you can think about you know how verbs in English can have three tenses. Similarly, a noun in Arabic can have three cases. The first case is called marfu'. Okay, the marfu'a case. And that is when the noun is a subject or it's describing the subject. Let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say we have the sentence, the cat eats food. Okay, here the subject is the cat. And so this noun, al-qitta in Arabic, would be in the case marfu'a. Okay, here's another sentence. Bilal is a Muslim. Bilal is the subject. And so Bilal would also be in marfu'a. Now in this case, Muslim here is describing the subject. It's what's known in, in English as it's a predicate. So predicates are also marfu'a. So Bilal is marfu'a and Muslim is marfu'a. Okay, does that make sense? Now let's look at the third case, Majroor case. And this case here is when the noun is after a preposition or it possesses something. Okay, so we might have in the car, that phrase in the car, the car here is after the preposition in, and so the car would have to be majroor. Okay, another sentence here is Bilal's pen. Let's say the sentence is Bilal's pen is red. So Bilal here, he possesses the pen, and so Bilal becomes majroor. Pen could become marfu'a if it's the subject of the sentence. So Bilal's pen is red, pen would be marfu'a. And then the, the second case, I went out of order, but is the mansub case, and that is pretty much all other situations. If a noun is not marfu' and it's not majroor, then it becomes mansub. Okay, so the cat eats food. Food is neither the subject of the sentence, nor is it a, after a preposition, or nor is it possessing something, and so it's mansub. I gave Bilal the letter. In this case, both Bilal and the letter are mansub. Because, again, they're neither the subject nor are they after a preposition or possessing something. So these three cases, so anytime you read a sentence in Arabic and you see a noun, it's going to fall into one of these three cases. And the reason these cases is so important, these cases are so important, is because they affect the ending of the ver word. So let's take a look at an example. The word muslimatun, which means a Muslim woman. If it is in marfu' a case, it has to end with a double dhamma. So it has to be muslimatun. Okay, so if I wanted to say um, a Muslim woman is walking, I have to say, I have to use muslimatun as the Muslim woman, uh, as the word for Muslim woman in that case. On the other hand, if I am in mansub case, if I say I saw a Muslim woman, then I have to say muslimatan. It has to be muslimatan because now she's the object, she's no longer the subject. And finally, if we have, for example, the scarf of the Muslim woman. Okay, then in that case, a Muslim woman, um, uh, uh, the, the word for Muslim woman has to be Muslimatin because it's in Majroor case. Okay, so now this is the one example of how you change this noun to fit these different cases. But nouns don't always follow this pattern. Okay, so let's, let's break down uh, nouns into five categories. So there's five types of noun. And each type changes its ending in a slightly different way. Now, when you're looking at this, you might feel like this is intimidating. I have three different cases. I have five different nouns. But in reality, the five nouns are actually quite similar. And it's not as different as you might imagine. So let's start with this first set of words. Words that end with tun. So we'll take the example of qariyatun, which means village. So qariyatun is, marf uh, is marfu'a case. Okay, so this is when it's a subject. I say qariyatun. When it's mansub, when it's again an object or when it's at least not a subject and it's not 
after a preposition or possession, then it's qaryatan. So I simply replace the un ending with the an ending. And if it's um, if it's a majrur case, then I just simply put qaryatin. Okay, so it's very simple. Marfu' corresponds to un, mansub corresponds to an, and majrur corresponds to in as the ending. Now, in definite case, of course, we can remember if we have, when we have al, we cannot put a tanween because a tanween, a tanween is the sign of an indefinite word, and al is the sign of a definite word. So we simply change the tanween to a single vowel haraka, u a e, corresponding to marfu', mansub, and majrur. Okay, so this is the first category of words, kind of feminine words that end in this ta marbuta. The second type is probably the biggest bucket. Most nouns and adjectives fall into this category, okay? And we'll take the example of the word yawmun, which means a day. And again, in indefinite, we have yawmun, which means like if the day is a subject, so uh, yawmun. If the day is an object, or again, if it's none of the other, neither of the other two categories, then we say yawman. And if it's, uh, if it's majrur, then we say yawmin. Okay, so now what's different between this category and the previous category? They're actually the same. The only difference is in the mansub uh, category, in the mansub case, we actually end, when we have this double tanween, we also add an alif. Okay, so it's just a writing difference. Everything else is the same. Again, in marfu' you end with a double damma. In mansub you end in a double fatha. And in majru you end in a double kasra. Everything else is the same, but only in when you write this double dhamma, you have the alif. If I go back to type 1, you notice there's no alif after a ta marbuta. But other than that, it's the same, and even the definite is exactly the same. Again, al yawmu, the day, when it's the subject, al yawma, the day, when it's not the subject or not in possession, and not in, after a preposition, al yawmi, when it's after a preposition or possession. All right? And again, this is the most common case. So if you understand this case and if this makes sense to you, you'll be covered for the vast majority of examples in the Qur'an. And let's take a look at one of those examples. وَقَتَلَ دَاوُودُ جَالُوتَ Okay, so this is from Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrating the story of Dawood alayhi salam, and specifically, Dawood killed Jalut. How do we know that it's Dawood that killed Jalut and not the other way around? In English, you know that based on the ordering. Dawood killed Jalut. Dawood comes first, and therefore he did the action, he's the subject, Jalut comes second. But in Arabic, it is actually conceivable that the object comes before the subject. So you actually have to take a look at the case endings. Dawudu. So this is the subject. Jaluta. Jalut is not the subject. In this case, it's the object. Okay, and this is why, like I said at the beginning of the video, if your vowels are off in Arabic, then you can change the meaning of the entire sentence. And you could switch the subject and the object around, for example. All right, let's go back to our um, category, five categories of nouns. The third one is when the when the marfu word ends with an in by itself. So there are some words in Arabic that just end with an in. So for example, wadin. Okay, so this is actually not in majrur case. It's in marfu case, but still you never say wadun. It just never takes that form. And so you'll pick up some of these words as you learn Arabic vocabulary. But if you see the word wadin, it could be marfu'a case. If you want to change it to madrur, it actually stays wadin. There's no change. And strangely enough, when you want to change it to a mansub case, you don't say wadan, you say wadiyan. Wadiyan. And this tells you a little bit of, and I, you know, I'm not going to go into this in too much depth, but the underlying reason for why this word behaves differently is because the original root has a ya at the end, and that kind of disappears in the marfu'a case. Okay, but it comes back in the mansub case, and so that's why you see wadiyan. And again, the majur case is wadin. If I go to the definite case, you just try to apply the same, uh, same rule here, but again, the ya that kind of disappeared comes back. So, al-wadi is, mar is marfu' al wadiya corresponding to wadiyan, is mansub, and again, al wadi again, is ma uh, majrur as well. Alright, type 4 is words ending in an, 
and that could be with an alif double fatha or a ya double fatha. There's a few words in the Quran like that. Um, so, for example, we have asan, which means staff. So asan, it ends with this double damma, and so it's going to stay in this double damma form for all three cases. So for marfu, for mansub, and for majrur, you're gonna have asan. Okay, and then the definite case is ala asa. Same thing, Quran, the word Quran is it also ends in an, and as a result, it's always going to be that way, whether it's mansub, marfu, or majrur, Quran. If it's definite, al Quran. All right, finally, last one, um, type five is words that end with a. So, for example, bushura, which means good tidings, good news. Um, again, in mansub, marfu, or ma majrur. You never change that. It never becomes Bushri, Bushru. It's always Bushra. And the definite also remains the same. Al-Bushra. Dunya, the world. Um, here it's, it also remains the same. Marfu'a mansub majrur. And the plural is Ad-Dunya. So you can kind of see like the, the, the default. Type 1, type 2. To, the, to indicate them, if I was to recap, if I was to go back. Type 1 and type 2. They're very kind of regular. For every case, there's a different ending. For marfu' it's un, for mansub it's an, for majrur it's in. But as you go on to these irregular types, then they start collapsing together. And so you have marfu' and majrur here are both in, mansub is an. And then for these last two categories, all three of them are just the same. So you cannot take a look at the case. Uh, you cannot take a look at the ending and figure out the case. You have to kind of look at the context clues. You have to look at the rest of the sentence to figure it out. All right, so we also should cover plurals. So plurals are, are interesting because they also change, but it's not so much the ending vowel change. It, it's not so much that the ending vowel changes. It's the ending letters that change. And so I'll give you an example. So let's start with a sound feminine plural. And by the way, if you need to remember what kind of plurals there are in Arabic, you can go back to the previous lesson where we covered the three different types. So sound feminine, samawatun, is the marfu' and how do we know it's sound feminine because of the atun ending um, and uh, some and here in the indefinite case uh, so this is indefinite here and so mansub we have samawatin and majrur we have samawatin as well so actually in this case for the sound feminine it's it is actually the haraka that changes at the end so samawatun samawatin samawatin so mansub and majrur they're in the same case. So when you look at it, again, you cannot really tell. You have to take a look at the context clues. And definite is just the same. You just add an al and you drop the tanween. Sound masculine is the one that's slightly different. So we have the word zalimuna, which means oppressors. And so zalimuna is marfu'a case. Zalimina, so you see it, it, the, the wow changed to a ya. Everything else is the same. The wow changed to a ya. Now this here is mansub and it's also majrur. Okay. So and then if I have the indefinite case, all I have to do is just add al al zalimuna from zalimuna. Now I've covered uh, and then and then to, to summarize everything, the case of a noun is based on its ending. Okay, for the vast majority of nouns, and usually it's based on the ending haraka like muslimatun, muslimatan, muslimatin. Sometimes it can be based on the last couple of letters. For example, in the case of a sound masculine plural. Now, I know I've covered a lot of material, and it's okay if you don't remember all five of the types of the nouns and all of the exact changes, but you should definitely know the, uh, the type 1 and type 2, you know, the, the, the most common changes. Uh, okay, so it's muslimatun for marfu', muslimatan for mansub, muslimatin for majrur, and you should know the changes for sound masculine and sound feminine. Those are really important. Okay, and then finally, we'll also cover the case of pronouns. So pronouns are a little bit different than nouns. They also have different cases, marfu', mansub, or majrur, but their case is not based on the ending. It's rather based on whether the pronoun is by itself or it's a suffix to a word. Okay, so we're not going to cover suffixes today, but we will cover the marfu' case of a pronoun. So if a pronoun is the subject of a sentence, so if I wanted to say, for example, you are a Muslim or I am a Muslim, in that case, the pronoun is the subject of the sentence. And so it's in marfu'a case, and, and the, the pronoun is a word by itself. Okay, and so let's take, a, let's take a look at a chart 
that shows all of the pronouns in Arabic um, when they are the subject case, so the marfu' case. So this is a chart that you should learn and memorize, okay? So let's go through it. So huwa is third person masculine singular. So in other words, that's how you say he. Huwa is he. Hum is third person masculine plural. In other words, it's they. If you're talking about a group of men, you say hum. So huwa hum. Then we get down to hiya is third per third person feminine she. Hunna is third person feminine sing uh, plural. So them woman. So they woman. So if I want to say those are Muslim women, I say hunna muslimatun. They are Muslim women. Hunna muslimatun. Anta you. Anta muslimun. You are a Muslim. Antum you all are Muslimun. Anti you um, women are a Muslim, anti-Muslimatun, Antunna, you all women, are Muslim women, so I can say Antunna Muslimatun, first person, I am a Muslim, Ana Muslimun, Nahnu Muslimun, we are all Muslims. So this chart here consists of all of the pronouns, and you should memorize this chart, okay? And you'll notice this interesting gap here, we'll cover that in a future lesson. There's actually a little, there's a few more pronouns that are left, but for now, just learn these pronouns and know them well. So if I say something like, uh, you are a teacher, the word for teacher in Arabic is ustadun, um, you should be able to say anta ustadun, uh, you are a believer, and uh, let's say female, so anti -musli uh, anti mu'minatun, and so on. Okay. So memorize this chart and understand these concepts. And of course, um, the reason we're covering all of this is so that we can understand nouns and adjectives and how they kind of relate to each other. And now we've covered all four of the different things. So definite or indefinite, the noun and the adjectives have to agree. And so do the pronouns, by the way. And pronouns usually are indefinite by definition. <laughs> They're usually definite because you're talking about a specific person. And so hia is definite by, by itself. And we'll see some examples of this. But, but whether you have a noun or a pronoun, they have to agree on gender, singular, plural. And now we've covered case endings as well. Um, and we, this is true for a noun or for a pronoun. All right, so we'll end with some exercises. So let's start off by this first phrase, Jannatun Aliyatun. Jannatun means garden, or, or it could also mean paradise, depending on the context. Aliyatun means high. And you'll notice here it's the feminine form of the word. The masculine form is uh, Aliyun. Um, and so we have here Jannatun Aliyatun, gardens that are lofty. Okay. You'll notice that they agree on the case endings. They agree that they're both indefinite. It agrees that they're both feminine and they're both indefinite. So a lofty garden is the translation here. Anallahu al-azizu. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, I am Allah the Almighty. How do we understand that? We have a pronoun, ana, I. And then we have Allahu al-azizu. We have I am Allah, Al-Aziz Almighty. So this is what Allah is saying. And you'll notice that this here is the descript this is the adjective that's that's describing this noun. And so it matches on all four criteria as well. Hua Mu'minun, he is a believer. He is a believer. Now this is interesting because Hua is indefinite. Mu uh, sorry, it's definite. Pronouns are definite. Mu'minun is indefinite. And so we saw this before in lesson one, when you have an indefinite followed by a definite, you put the word is in between. So he is a believer. It forms a complete sentence. But other than that, they have to agree on everything else. So the case endings, this is marfu' This is also marfu' because of the un ending. This is, in, uh, this is uh, masculine, this is masculine, this is singular, this is singular. He is a believer. Antum muslimuna, you all are Muslim. Here we have plural, so we have plural, masculine, masculine, marfu'a, marfu'a. Anta tawab, you are the oft forgiving. Again, you can see that all four criteria match, uh, except for in def this is definite, and this is also definite actually. In this case, all four criteria match. Antum zalimuna, you all are oppressors or wrongdoers. Again, all four criteria match, except that this is indefinite, this is definite, and so we put in an R in between this. You all are oppressors. 
and we will see everything else matches. So marfu' you can confirm that, and plural, confirm that, masculine, you can confirm that as well. Okay. So in these exercises, we didn't see a lot of the other cases yet because we haven't really covered possession and preposition and so on, but we'll cover that in the next few lessons. So for now, just understand the rules and we will apply them, inshallah, in the next few lessons. See you then. Assalamu alaikum.